Welcome back to Rafting Magazine and my workout series on basically whatever's kind of floating around in my head about the river and thoughts that I want to share with you guys. And so this week I thought I would talk about fear. And before we get into it, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel. And if you have questions or comments, as always, make sure you put them in there and make sure you hit that bell so you're getting all our updates. And so fear. This week I went on Slab Creek, um, pretty fun run. Uh, we had one day of about 600 CFS and another day of 1600 CFS. So it's quite a bit of difference. It was kind of like the low end of the spectrum and the high end of the spectrum. And we took the same boat both days, uh, both a 12 foot SOTAR. Um, so the first day it was pretty nice because we were sliding all over the rocks and it was, it was pretty easy. Second day, it was uh, a little more exciting. There were a lot of near misses. Um, we had one flip, one, I guess for lack of a better term, uh, near miss. Um, not really sure why we didn't flip. Um, there are a couple small factors of weight that might have made it so that we made it through, but it was definitely luck. And then uh, two or three other near misses that I, um, I definitely almost swam a couple more times. So um, that brings me to the topic of fear. And when you're in a small boat on a river with a lot of water running through it, it uh, definitely brings up some of those feelings, gets, uh, gets your adrenaline flowing. Um, if you don't feel some sort of fear on that, then um, that would be kind of surprising because I feel like um, for the most part as boaters, we go through some pretty challenging things and um, that fear can do a lot and from my time on the river I've definitely seen guides freeze up in situations like that um, situations where they feel like they're in over their head um, so it really makes you ask yourself where um, kind of where you're at and where your ability level lies I wrote some articles on this. I'll put those down below in the description so you guys can read those um, if you're curious kind of where you stand and just want some more insight on where that is. But I feel like everybody goes through these moments of fear. Everybody has these challenges where the river kind of comes at you and from a direction that you don't expect. Um, you might take a big swim, um, might get a really bad beat down, and um, those sort of things stick with you and I feel like in rafting you know there's that old adage you're, everybody's just between swims um, and that kind of adds to the fear of it and then uh, when people talk things up um, that creates a lot of fear scouting for a long time that also creates a lot of fear um, you know you can kind of roll with a bravado of just plowing through a rapid but when you take a lot of time to look at it um, those, those feelings of fear definitely bubble up and um, they can be challenging, they can be paralyzing, um, but they really cut to the core of our fight or flight response. So I think that we see a lot of two different things. Um, from the flight response, we'll see a lot of people walking rapids uh, that are well within their ability levels simply because of a perceived fear. Um, we see a lot of people who don't want to go on runs because of one bad experience. Um, so that fear really sticks with you in a really salient way. And then um, people who just freeze up as well. And you know, this might be you anywhere in the spectrum. You might freeze up at one point and then um, you might say, hey, I'm gonna walk that rapid in another. Those are all, those are all fear responses. And I think they're all valid and I think they're all um, an important thing that we should look at as boaters. Um, on the other side of that coin, there's the bravado of it and that's the fight response. So your fight response is going to drive you to do things like um, recklessly jump into a rapid, not scout, do some aggressive boat scouting where you really should pull over the river and be like, okay, I haven't seen this rapid before. Is that the top of my ability level, I should probably look at it, but um, you get afraid and you're like, oh yeah, my adrenaline's flowing, I'm just gonna get in there and do it. Um, 
so I feel like that bravado manifests in a lot of different ways. You'll want to fight the river, um, just muscle your way down it. Uh, you might not scout. Um, one of the other things that I think can be a little toxic to you as a boater is when that fear response causes you to belittle other boaters, attack other boaters, because you can't really attack the river. I mean, it's a force of nature, so um, that kind of leaves uh, your mind to do some sort of projection. And so you'll either project your anger, uh, your, your fight response on yourself, or, you'll, or you can do it on the people around you. And with rafting, since it's such a group activity, there's plenty of people that are directed at. Someone might say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna walk this rapid, guys. This is a little above my ability level. And other people might uh, jump on the bandwagon and start belittling them. And that is definitely the fight response. That's the bravado. But when it comes down to it, everybody in that situation is afraid. Um, it's just manifesting in different ways based on where you're at in your mind and where you're at on the river. Um, the guides who can truly master their fear, though, and uh, pull out their courage are the ones who uh, recognize that you have a lot of fear, uh, recognize that you don't want to do it, and the guides that say, hey, I'm afraid of swimming that, or I don't want to swim that today, so I'm going to walk around. And when people are making fun of them, you'll see these guides around. Um, people will make fun of them, and they'll say, yeah, whatever, man, I'm just, I'm not going to do it, and that's, that's all there is to it. Um, some other guides might say, okay, you know, I know the risks. Uh, if you guys can set safety, they'll try to mitigate risks and things like that. Um, so what I advocate is not giving in to those feelings of fight or flight and trying to pull yourself out of it. And recognize first, one, that you're afraid, and two, that those feelings manifest in potentially complicated ways. Um, and those complicated ways can cause strains in your relationship with other boaters. And that's definitely something that we don't want to have. We want to make sure that we're maintaining good relationships because we might be mocking the guy walking around the rapid and then go charge into that rapid and all of a sudden it gets all messed up and who's the one pulling us out? Well, the guy walking the rapid that you just made fun of. Um, so I think that that's an important thing that everybody th should think about when they're boating is that um, fear manifests in a lot of different ways and knowing your response to it. Most people have a, a common response that, that they have, whether it be fight or flight or um, whatever it may be. So recognizing that fear also helps you become a better boater because you can pull yourself out of that emotional state and start looking at things rationally and say, hey, you know, I've done rapids this hard before. Um, I can do this, I, I, I know it. Um, and that increases your confidence level. So when your confidence level increases, then you start becoming a better boater. But a lot of boaters will also get wrapped up in the emotion of it, and, and that tends to bring you down. And it has that crab bucket effect where one person will say, okay, I know I'm afraid, but uh, I'm going to run this rapid anyway because I know the risks and I know what's down there. Um, and then other people be, might be like, I'm going to go in there. And it's like, dude, you got to just, just chill for a second. That's, I think that's the main point is just calm down and pull your emotions out of, out of the situation. And that's going to help a lot with the fear, but it's also going to help you a lot to become a better boater and to understand what's happening on the river and understand what's happening in yourself. Because ultimately, the river's going to do what it's going to do, but the way you interact with it is how you become a good boater. And having control while you're in those situations, uh, not just to the boat, and not just the paddle, and not just the, the whole situation in general. You've got to have control over yourself first before you can have control of the raft. So... Um, that's my little talk on fear today. If you guys have questions or comments or um, concerns or just um, you know want to point out some ways that fear manifests to yourself, please leave it in the comments. We can talk about it. Um, if you guys have any suggestions or questions for follow-up videos, please leave those down there too. And make sure you guys are all subscribed to us, and we'll see you downriver.